So tonight is our last night in Colossians, and it's also uh, my last night teaching you guys. So after tonight, I won't be, actually I will be teaching in the fall, but like as of right now, tonight's my last lesson of Synergy for the year, and I'm trying to think, okay, so what do we go out with? Well, typical youth pastor, I'm going to do this type of message. Slide. Summer, I am going to give you a summer challenge because that's what a good typical youth pastor is supposed to do. When your minds are already geared to summer, I should do a message that's about summer. So what I want to do tonight is give you a lesson that if you just start this in the summer, hopefully it wouldn't end the summer, but you would carry these principles, you would carry these ideas for the rest of your life. So what I want to do is go to Colossians chapter 4, and we're going to look at verses 2 through 6. And looking at these small amount of verses, I just want to share some advice with you about what you should do with your summer. So next slide. Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 6, and I'm going to start with verse 2. This is what Paul says. Continue steadfastly in prayer being watchful in it with thanksgiving. So the first thing I want you to do this summer is this, continue in prayer. And Paul says this, don't give up on prayer, continue in it. And for some of us, okay, prayer might be a difficult thing. So if you want to get close to Jesus, you get close to Jesus by praying. And Paul says something really interesting here. He says, continue in prayer with Thanksgiving. How many of you would say Thanksgiving is your favorite holiday? Anyone? Okay, Christmas, Fourth of July, you don't care about holidays? Okay, your birthday? Okay, your birthday is not a holiday, but... Sorry. But anyways, so Paul says continue with prayer, but yet continue with prayer. And here's the key, thankfulness, that people who are not thankful don't pray. That for some of you, the reason why Jesus is so distant from you, it comes back to this question, when was the last time you were actually thankful to Jesus? That if you're anything like me, whenever I notice I'm not praying often, it's because my heart has grown hard to Jesus. It's that I'm not thankful towards Jesus. And because there's a lack of thankfulness in my heart, there's a lack of praying in my heart, that I'm going to tell you one of the worst things that ever happened to me. I was 12 years old, maybe I was 13, and I played on this basketball team, and I got a trophy. Participation trophy, yes. That is one of the worst things that happened. Why? Because I didn't deserve a trophy. I was one of the worst players on the team. That nothing about me screams athlete. Okay, the fact you agree with that, it kind of hurts. But anyways, so I got a trophy for showing up. And here's the really bad thing, that on this team, it was a rec league, so the coach had to play me for two quarters. He had no choice but to play me, and our team made the playoffs, and it was me and two other guys that were really bad players, and my mom, she stumbled upon hearing the playoff schedule, so when me and this other bad player showed up, I thought the coach was going to have a heart attack. It was like, how did you get here? Because the third bad player, he wasn't there, so the coach never told him about the playoff game, but anyways, I got a trophy just for showing up. And the whole idea of a participation trophy is to build self-esteem in you, is to make you feel good about yourself. The problem with that, it creates this idea of entitlement. And if you feel entitled to things, this is what happened. I played on a school team, and the coach never played me. And I got mad at the coach. Like, why am I not playing? And the coach had every right not to play me. His job was to play the best players on the court. And I was, like, terrible. It was like, coach, work on my talent. And the coach is like, what talent? There's nothing there. Can you fill water bottles? 
okay? But you see what entitlement does? It made me bitter against my coach that didn't play me. And what happens in your heart when God holds out on you, when God doesn't give you things you think you deserve, that creates entitlement in your heart, and that creates bitterness in your heart. Why? Because the Bible says that all good gifts come from above, that God is the one who gives you good gifts. But if God doesn't give you the gifts that you think you deserve, or you see God bless someone else in a different way, that creates bitterness in your heart. And when you become entitled, it creates this ingratitude. And because if you're like me, people my age and younger grew up with the whole entitlement idea. So if you have that idea operating in your heart, and when God doesn't give you what you think you deserve, that creates bitterness, and you're no longer thankful to God. That all of us have the ability, that Isaiah, he says that the earth is full of God's glory. And all of us can walk in this world and look at God's glory and not be moved at it, by it at all. If you want to get close to Jesus, if you really want this relationship with Jesus to work, thankfulness, Look in your heart and find what are you thankful to God for, and how does that work? Uh, Paul says this, at the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear, which is how I ought to speak, that Paul is in prison, and he's saying, pray for us that I can still show the gospel, that Paul, being in prison, he's still wrapped up in who God is. That, guys, some of you might be far from God is because you seek God to feel better about yourself. Whenever you seek God to simply feel better about yourself, that's not how Christianity works. That Christianity works when you pour yourself out for others, so don't seek God simply to feel better about yourself, but seek God because he's worth it. That why is Paul in prison? Why is he still seeking after God? Because God is worth it. And when you seek after God because he's worth it, good feelings come along the way. But if you seek God simply for good feelings, you'll have a very selfish Christianity and you'll have a very selfish summer. How do we get over that? Be thankful to God and seek to serve him. And Paul says something interesting. He says, don't pray for me. He says, pray for us. My second point for you this summer will be this. Don't leave your friends behind. Don't leave your friends behind. That this whole idea of Christianity, you'll never find Jesus saying this, hey, it's just me and you. Jesus doesn't say, hey, as long as you have me, right, that, that's it. You don't need no other people. No, Jesus saved you to make you part of a church. That when Jesus sent the disciples out, he paired them up together, and they went out as a team. That Christianity is not meant to be done by yourself. That Paul says, pray for us. So who are your friends that are going to challenge you in your faith. Because a mark of a good friend is this. They challenge you in your life, and a really good friend, they'll challenge you in your life even when you don't want to be challenged. So for this summer, who is asking you the hard questions about Jesus? Who's asking you about thankfulness? Who's asking you about doing things for him? Christianity is not meant to be done alone. And for some of you, this breaks my heart because some of you, I see you as really isolated. And that was me in high school, and that was me in college, that I had this whole idea, as long as I had my Bible, I'm okay. And I'm completely blinded by what Jesus said. Jesus says, no, I'm glad you have me, but you also need your friends. 
So who are your friends this summer who are going to hold you accountable to Christ? You try to do Christianity, you, you try to do this by yourself, and you, and you try to carry this weight, and you might do well for, for a bit. Like, you can walk well, but then something happens, and then you start buckling, and then you start going down, right? And you can't get up by yourself, that you need friends. Like, who's going to help you carry this weight? Because Jesus never wanted you to carry this by yourself, but he wanted you to have your friends to help you. But if I were to ask some of you, what is your summer going to look like? Like, what is your plan? You might do this. Slide. That might be your summer right there. That your goal is to do nothing this summer, right? So what does Paul say uh, in Colossians? Uh, He says this. Verse 5. Let's go back. Verse 5 says this, walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. So let's go back to that slide. Paul says, make the best use of your time. So first, let me hear you say this, because typically this would come across this way, that, hey, you need to be doing something 24-7. No. No. That for some of you, you need to do this. That you need to do nothing, right? That God, he didn't say work seven days straight. God says rest. That God wants you to rest more than you do. And so often we teach Christianity as something you constantly have to do something. And there's days when you don't need to do anything, That some of you, this school year was incredibly hard, and it was incredibly hard because you never rested. This summer, rest. Take a couple days and literally do nothing but rest. But don't let a couple of days become your entire summer of doing nothing, right? That Jesus would say, Make the best use of your time. When you make the best use of your time, some of that involves resting, but other times it involves actually doing something uh, for Jesus. So how many of you have jobs? Okay, so before we do that, let me uh, tell you this. So from this past school year, a lot of your academic problems they could have been fixed by simply doing this, by starting your schoolwork a week earlier than you did. Because some of you, you're like me, you procrastinate. You procrastinate to the very last second, and then you want God to bail you out. You're like, hey, God, I have the Spanish test. I don't know Spanish at all, but please help me pass this test. And God's like, why didn't you study And then you get mad at your teacher because you think your teacher doesn't like you, and maybe they don't like you. I I don't know. Maybe some of your teachers are out to get you. But then you help them get you because you don't study for their tests that they give you, right? Or some of you, you have like 12-page papers, and you waited till the very night that it is due. And then it takes forever for you to do it. Or others of you, if your teachers really don't like you, this is what they do. They'll say this. It doesn't matter. You could turn it in late. It'll just be 10 points. And some of you, you're like, I just need to get a B in this class. So I'll wait two days, and two days becomes five days. And then that project you needed to do, it took you 15 minutes to do it. And now you have five days worth of stress in your life for something that could have been done in 15 minutes. A lot of your problems couldn't be solved if you did something simply a week earlier. And I asked some of you, if you have jobs, how many guys like money? Okay, yeah, we all, we all like money. And if you don't, if you say you don't like money, you're a liar. So, and you just sinned in youth group in church. But here's the thing. Time and money, they are a lot alike. If you use your money poorly, 
you'll find yourself in really bad situations. If you use your time poorly, you'll find yourself in really bad situations this summer. If you use your money wisely, you could have a really great summer. If you use your time wisely, you can have a really great summer. Make the best use of your time. And for some of you, the best use of your time is this. Be kind. Be kind to people. And why should you be kind? Next slide. It's because of this. You should be kind to people because of that. And you're probably thinking, okay, what does this have to do with being kind? Does anyone know who Plato was? Okay, public school history and private school history and homeschool history. All right, there's one. What school do you go to? Public? Okay, public school history is the best. Anyways, so slide. This guy named Plato, he said this, be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. Why should you be kind this summer? Because there's going to be people you meet at camp. There's going to be people you meet at Momentum. There's going to be people who you simply brush, who you brush shoulders with on your sports teams. And they're going to go through really hard times. And you don't know it. But you simply should be kind. Right? There's days when life is really hard for you. And no one knows what you're going through. And you simply want someone to be kind. That's everyone. Uh, go back to the verses. And look what verse 6 says. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. That Paul says, be kind with your words, because you don't know what someone's going through. Have you ever, like, been at school, and you did something really small to someone, and they just, like, lost it, and they went crazy on you, right? And you're like, dude, what happened? It was milk. <laughs> I took your milk. Why are you trying to fight me now? Like, what's going on? And here's the thing. It had nothing to do with that situation. It had nothing to do with milk. But what you don't know is maybe that person had a really hard home life. And maybe they lived with an abusive parent. And maybe that morning they saw their dad do things to their mom. They should have never have happened. And then they come to school and they're carrying all that in their heart. And that one small thing you did, it had nothing to do with milk, but it had everything to do with what's going on in their heart that you don't know about. And that's all of us. All of us have issues going on that no one knows about. Be kind, because everyone is going through a hard battle. And there's going to be people that just annoy you Right? That there's some people you find it hard to be kind to. That there's some people you just want to rip their heads off. And if you feel that way, you're a human. Right? It, this whole idea of being kind to everyone, it doesn't mean you have to be a doormat. It means you can, tell, you can actually tell someone, hey, what you're doing, it's annoying. But you can do that in a kind way way, right? I know some of you are laughing because you know this is your struggle this summer, right? Be kind. Well, why? Because Jesus was kind, right? So when it comes to this summer and when we bring everything to a close, like I said, I don't want to speak long tonight. This is everything I have. I know your minds are all over the place. When it comes to this summer, make the best use of your time. Be thankful to what Jesus wants to do in your life. That I think you can do way more than what you think. I think you can accomplish way more than what you think you can accomplish. Why? Not because of you. Because of God who lives in you. And because God lives in you. And because God wants to do great things. That gives you the ability to do great things too. And how is that going to happen? Make the best use of your time. Be kind to everyone. So what I'm going to do right now, or actually what we're going to do, something a little bit different. 
I want you guys, remember we said this, you can't do Christianity by yourself. You need to do this as an us, as a group. I'm going to ask you guys to get in groups and pray. Literally pray about this summer. Ask one thing you would want God to do this summer through your life. And as you're praying, we're going to do that for a little bit. You guys can break out, get in groups, and then we'll have Ryan and the band come back up shortly. So right now, you guys get in groups and actually pray with each other about this summer because Christianity's not meant to be done by yourself.